guys you're welcome back to my channel hope you guys are feeling good hope you guys are bouncing like a newborn baby my name is bukume Beke crown so guys i'm here with another one this time around we're gonna be checking out a video together titled top eight culture shocks when moving to Australia so this will shock you so you need to be ready for this before you move to Australia so that when you move to the country you get used to it nothing will come to you unaware or nothing will come to you unprepared so let's check it out guys all right let's give this a go so you've heard about the deadly animals scorching sun impossible isolation mm. the other one um yeah. and sausage and bread and you're still thinking that you want to come to the land down under mm -hmm. then prepare yourself for these weird Australian culture shocks G'day yeah. guys my name's Ross and I moved with my family to Australia during a global pandemic now I love Whoa. living in Australia but when we first moved over here it was a little bit weird now to yeah. stop things being so weird for you when you make the move these are our top eight culture shocks when moving to Australia oh, Australians nice. love their sport but unless you're from mm. Australia sometimes the sport is a little bit strange for example football isn't football and I'm not really talking about soccer yeah. or am I it really freaks me out to say the word soccer for me I know what football is mm. and for Australians they also know what football is but when you move to Australia just resign yourself to the fact that you're now probably going to follow the minority sport and also need a special subscription just to be able to watch it football in Australia can mean many things football for me means soccer but football in Queensland means rugby league and if you come from one of the southern states like Victoria or South Australia then football can mean AFL and I still don't understand how that game works but I like, want to seriously? learn you can still have a beer at an AFL game right okay. but if you come from the UK like me and you still want to watch your beloved football then you're gonna to have to become a social hermit bound to the wee hours of the night just to watch your darling Premier League if you don't like it then take up one of the other many forms of football and if you're American well they also kind of play baseball and stuff too but probably not your form of football be like too hot in all the pads and stuff or imagine getting a spider in your helmet Ooh. the second shot that we had coming from the anti-social rest of the world is the fact that in Australia people are actually friendly to you I mean don't get me wrong oh. like people are friendly in other parts of the world but Australians are kind of like this weird level of friendly people greet really? you on the street neighbors come up to your house and welcome you to the neighborhood people actually offer you help now for me being the anti-social hermit that I am watching my Premier League people being friendly to me was a little bit weird and it just took a little bit of getting used to oh. but when it happens to you in Australia it really does make you realize how nice the world can be now hey you're mm. gonna think to yourself people around the world are nice and lots of them are and you normally notice it when you're on holiday maybe it's the weather that makes people happier because I can tell you that the dreary darkness of winter kind of makes people the opposite to be honest this is one of the best culture shocks of Australia calling all social recluses out there if you move to Australia it's gonna make you a better person no one wants your social awkwardness or unfriendly banter Australians are genuinely friendly unless they don't like you but there's no beating around the bush it's only straight now coming from the northern hemisphere on the other side of the world having a cold Christmas becomes a rite of passage but here cold Christmases <laughs> welcome to the heat my friend Christmas in summer it's hot really hot if you don't have aircon you're gonna struggle it's not dark you and your family aren't just confined to one room watching each other open presents you probably didn't even want wishing that the TV was on so that you wouldn't have to make awkward conversation with family members who you hardly ever see apart from the festive time wondering to yourself is it too early to start drinking yet the fact is that with Christmas in Australia you get to take all of the good bits of Christmas like presents and spending time with family that you actually want to spend time with and then add all the good things of summer like going to the beach spending time in the pool wow. having a barbecue in the sunshine this don't hang so on to your fun. old traditions of Christmas like mm -hmm. your roast turkey with all of the trimmings I mean do hang on to them but don't whinge that you're doing it in the heat have a barbecue instead savor the wonder that is a potato bake why did we not have Ooh. these in England or if we did I never had one they're gorgeous make Ooh. new traditions and embrace the fact that Christmas in summer is now your new life now coming Ooh. from cosmopolitan Europe I was kind of used to this next one because people on the continent sometimes like to have a siesta but at least they opened up the shops and stuff again now I know that this can catch out the average Brit 
visiting Marbella for the first time and wondering why in the middle of the day all the shops are shut. But in Australia it goes to another extreme and shops just shut early. Want to get a coffee after 4pm? Yeah, nah. Don't be crazy, why would you need that much caffeine in your system at night? It's going to go dark in a couple of hours. Want a takeaway after 9pm on a Friday? Well, you better live in the city centre. Ain't no one going to work after 9pm in the burbs. You crazy? Unless you're in the major cities, things in Australia are rarely 24 hours. Ooh. People have a life. They don't want to sit there waiting in a restaurant or a shop for your convenience. Don't be so selfish. <laughs> Why aren't things so convenient? Well, it turns out people don't actually want to work all the time. And you need to respect that. Get a bit more organised. Enjoy a night in. Realise that that thing you think you need, you probably don't need right now. I'm sorry that the shop's shut early, but if you don't have that thing you want right now, is the world going to end? Probably not. And if it was that important, you wouldn't have forgotten it, right? And this culture mm. shock extends into the next one. And it's the work culture. And weirdly enough, most Australians don't like to work. I mean, they do. Yeah. They do like to work. That's a massively sweeping statement. But fortunately mm -hmm. for people who live here, we don't live to work. Working to live is an incredibly emancipating feeling. What's the point in going to work all day to earn money to then not have the time to spend it? I don't want to live a life like that, do you? Especially when you have all of this fantastic weather and beautiful scenery to spend it in. Except mm. when it's an La Nina year. Like, the scenery's still there, but the weather's still a bit crap than it has been for the last two years. Fortunately for most Australians, this laissez-faire attitude to work extends to lots of different industries. If you're sick of the daily grind in your job, then come to Australia and you can do the same thing but not work as hard. <laughs> Wouldn't we all want to just do that? Ooh. But sometimes this incredibly laid-back nature can lend itself to some slightly weird slash potentially unsafe habits. Uh, Barefoot in public? Mm -hmm. That one takes a little bit of getting used to. Especially living up here in the sunshine state of Queensland, seeing people go barefoot in your local coals can be pretty much a daily occurrence. Lots Yay. of people do it, especially children. It's like they've got an allergy to shoes or thongs. Just put some thongs on, mate. Protect yourself. Now for us foreigners who are used to wearing shoes anyway just to keep our toes warm, seeing people go barefoot in public and it's not the beach or a swimming pool can be a little bit weird. But actually, mm -hmm. rather than criticizing or wondering if they've got asbestos in the soles of their feet, don't criticize, mm. join them. Everyone talks about that feeling where you can spread your toes in the sand Yay. and how liberating it can be. Well, just go barefoot in public, mate. You get that feeling all the time. Except when it's the middle of summer and you step on that black tarmac. Maybe put your thongs on then. Now, if you thought going barefoot in public was rather informal or slightly offensive, then wait until the average Australian speaks to you. Don't get me wrong. Most of them are educated, eloquent individuals. I'm like, wow, 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 wow. I'm really enjoying this video. I don't feel like possible. But I need to say something quick before we conclude the video because that's how I do it, guys. Pardon me for uh, posting the video. But one of the culture shock that really shocked me, really, 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 really shocked me very well was when he said Christmas period is always hot. Oh my. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, if you're expecting the cold weather during Christmas period in Australia, hmm. Oh my god, you'll be disappointed. Like, seriously. But I love the fact that they catch so much fun. They go out, they eat a lot of food. I was even salivating when he was showing me those, you know, chicken, the food. Like, oof. So let's keep watching. But the average Aussie does love a swear. I even do it on the radio. The first time I heard shit on the radio in the morning, I was wondering if my driving was okay or if someone was shouting at me in traffic. No, it was the person on the radio. I've even heard them drop the odd which can be wholly confusing to some of the people watching this that don't even know what a is. They can say on the radio, yet I'm cursy enough to bleep on my videos. What a beautiful country we live in. Now don't get me wrong, they don't go for the hardcore stuff like or bugger. Wait, bugger isn't really that bad, is it? Oh, I've buggered this up. But most Australians will drop the C-bomb at you as a term of endearment. How's it going? I know that for lots of people when they watch Game of Thrones, dropping the C-bomb was a big taboo. And if you don't like that word, sorry, Australia might not be for you. Because in Australia, lots of people like to swear and everyone's So you better get used to it. I don't think I've ever used that many bleeps in a video before. I really hope I bleeped all of those out. Now the last one is something that's awesome, but also one of my little pet peeves. In Australia, they have some of the best containers for sauce in those little foldy things that just squeeze out perfectly. What an invention! But in Australia, if you want the privilege of sauce, you have to pay for it. Want some tomato sauce, mate? Yeah, that could be 15 cents, please. Or 30 cents if you want two. 
because they're like really small packets. Now don't get me wrong, not everywhere does charge for sauce. Thank the Lord. But lots of places do, and it's pretty common practice. If you're like my wife that just loves to slather everything in tomato ketchup, then not only calling it ketchup is gonna be weird in Australia, because it's tomato sauce, as I've been told many times when I get that confusing look asking for ketchup. But like going to America and having to pay for something and then add on the sales tax, if you want sauce, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more. But the good thing is we don't have to tip, because everyone gets a fair wage. And Medicare, and gun laws. What a beautiful country Australia is. Now if you're thinking of moving to Australia and you don't wanna live in Melbourne or Sydney, and you think that like us, Brisbane could be the place for you, then watch this video to wonder if Brisbane is really worth going to. See you later. Oh, it seems he actually forgot to drop the link of the video. Oof. Please, please, please. If you're planning to go to Australia, I'm sure you've learned a lot from this. Like, if seriously, if I'm actually going to Australia and I didn't watch this video, I will actually be shocked because most of the points it raised is kind of weird. It's totally weird to me, guys. He said they love to swear, swear a lot. So if you see them swearing or cursing or raising abuses, don't be shocked. <laughs> it's a normal lifestyle for them. So you need to be prepared for that. And he spoke about them, love, uh, they love to walk barefooted. Like, that's one of the points that I just remembered before we continue watching the remaining rest of the video how can you walk barefooted even when the sun is catchy they will not wear slippers they will not wear shoes they will walk barefooted on the road it's really number for you to walk, walk barefooted you know in the beach or in the swimming pool it's a normal thing because you are in um in a water area so you have to feel the breeze and because of the sand you know um it's more conf convenient for you to walk barefooted but what barefooted on the road and the streets and he, he showed a picture whereas uh, somebody's foot was getting burnt and she didn't mind how can your feet your foot be getting burnt and you still keep walking barefooted like that is kind of strange that's kind of strange he listed a lot of points that came to me as a shock i was like that's Australia, wow, what a beautiful country. What a beautiful country. And I really enjoyed watching this video. I learned so much about, you know, the culture shock because it actually shocked me. Yeah, it did. I hope you really learned a lot from this video. Thank you for watching to this point. You are my real VVIPs, guys. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button for more. Like, share, and comment. I'll see you in the next one. Stay blessed. Bye.